All right, what's up, guys? My name is John. Um, so lately, I've been getting a lot of questions on my color grading process, what I do to achieve the look that I get. And so today, I'm going to try to quickly do a video about my color grading process, uh, what steps I usually take, and uh, kind of just how I achieve the look that I achieve. I don't use LUTs or anything like that. So every time I do color something, my process is slightly different. I don't have like a set thing that I do every time that helps me achieve the look that I'm going for. My process is kind of different every time. I mean, and that kind of goes for everybody who doesn't use LUTs. And the reason I don't use LUTs is that I really strive to go for a completely original look, um, something that I haven't really seen before, uh, you know, a color combination that, that isn't like spread across the internet already. I really try to be original with my coloring and that's like one of my favorite things to do. It takes like more time, but I think the result in the end is worth it because then you end up with totally original footage. So the footage you guys are just watching was a short film I just did exploring an abandoned building in Rochester, New York. I spent a pretty good amount of time on coloring. So I'm going to use this video to show you my color grading process. So you see here we have totally ungraded footage and definitely some work needs to be done to pull the colors out and the contrast and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is create an adjustment layer. Hit OK. If you have your sequence already open, it'll just create an adjustment layer that matches the exact size of your sequence and drag it over the clips you want to color. Drag it over the entire thing. I like to create a standard grade for the entire project. All right, so now that I have my adjustment layer uh, pulled over, I like to open up my screen so I can get as nice of a view of the footage as possible. And then I head over into the Lumetri Color tab. Here, what I'm going to do is play uh, first with the highlights shadows, whites, and blacks. And before that, this clip is relatively well exposed. It's pretty even. Um, but before that, I would play with the exposure a little bit. So my first step usually is boosting the highlights. This makes the image a lot brighter and, and creates that like really kind of crispness to the image. Um, next step I like to do is pull down the shadows. Uh, that looks about right. And then really what kind of pops this is pulling up the whites and pulling down the blacks. That's where um, I think most of the solid look for my image comes from. Uh, again, the whites make it a crisp, beautiful image, and then the blacks just add kind of a depth and a richness that comes with a lot of cinematic footage. Um, and then from here, I adjust certain things to my liking. If I'm going to pull out the shadows a little bit more, sometimes the image gets a little bit dark so when you crush the blacks like that. But this looks like a pretty solid look to me. So next, what I like to do is go into the creative tab. Uh, we're always going to have to add a little bit of post sharpening to this image if we're shooting uh, S log. If you're shooting a standard in camera profile, this might not be necessary for you. And then we'll head over to the curves. Um, this is one of my favorite tabs to play in. I love playing with just the standard curve here. Uh, I usually pull up the blacks a little bit on the low end and it adds that kind of uh, vintage film look a little bit. If you push this too much, it starts looking Instagrammy and gross, but I do like to pull it up a little tiny bit and it just gives it that unique film look. Next, what we'll do here is pull down the blast a little bit more. Again, it just adds a little bit more richness, and then we're gonna be pulling up the highlights here. So now that we've played with the blacks and whites and the curves, uh, what I like to do to add saturation back into the image is play with the color wheel. The color wheel is a lot more controlled way to add saturation to the image. It doesn't just add uh, straight saturation across the board. You can choose to saturate yellows or oranges or blues or teals. It gives you a lot more control over which colors you want to bring out in the image. And you can use this to create different moods for the image if you want, you know, uh, a blue image is typically associated with something sad, an orange image is associated with something in the summer. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with color to create a certain mood to your video. And if you want me to do a video about color theory, that's kind of an entirely different topic and would make this a video way too long. But if you'd like me to do something like that, uh, let me know in the comments. Anyways, um, so here I'm going to play with the oranges and the teals because this is what the typical cinematic look is. So um, we're going to boost the oranges and boost the teals and blues. Careful not to push these too far because your image can kind of start to look a little bit corny. When stuff gets oversaturated and too vivid, it, I honestly just think it looks a little bit gross. That looks pretty good to me. Next, what we're going to do is head back into the creative tab. And this is again going to give us a more cinematic feel. So what we're going to do here is play with a shadow tint and the highlight tint. What I like to do is for a typical cinematic image, if I'm just doing a quick grade is make the shadows teal and the highlights kind of an orangish red. 
Uh, most people do just straight orange, but I like to kind of go a little bit orange is red. I personally like that look a little bit better, but that's personal preference. All right, so that's kind of a base grade for the entire thing, but like I said, there's gonna be some spots in there that are way overexposed or way underexposed like this one. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, chop up your adjustment layer just over top of a clip that you wanna adjust more specifically, and then give it that, and then click on that piece of the adjustment layer and you can uh, adjust it. So like, let's say this one's way overexposed, we'll pull down the highlights, um, pull down the whites, and just instantly that makes you be able to see so much more of the image. And then in this instance, you can pull down the blacks and the shadows a lot more, and it just brings everything out. Not every clip is exactly the same. Some are a little bit brighter, some are a little bit darker, some have certain colors you want to pull out more than others. Basically everything for this process is kind of adjustable per clip. And that's why I don't really like using LUTs that much because I think it's kind of a, I think it kind of puts you in a mode where you're just like, it's good enough and it, you're satisfied with it. But there's so many more like specific adjustments you can make to the clips. And um, like I said, you know, each clip is different. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this look. If you want me to do a video about the other parts of creating cinematic footage, this could be uh, camera settings, um, exposure settings, and kind of just different things to look out for through the entire process. Let me know in the comments. I'll do a video about that. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you out, it'd be really appreciated if you'd leave a like on it and uh, share it or comment and help some other people see it. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Later.